You know, I talk to people all the time and I ask them, do you know that God loves you? That God has a plan for you? I found that most people have made plans for their temporal vacation. Maybe it's Ocean City, maybe it's Myrtle Beach, maybe it's going to Disneyland. But you know what? Most people have thought about eternal vacation, but most people give little consideration to the eternal vacation. You know, the Bible says that it's appointed that we're gonna live and we're gonna die. And I've read the entire Bible by the time I was in eighth grade. And the word purgatory is never once mentioned in the Bible. I wanna encourage you today, are you for sure where you're going when you die? Is your reservation for heaven? I'm not talking the Hyatt, I'm talking heaven. I'm not talking the Sheraton. Are you RSVP'd with the Savior? You know, RSVP is a Latin phrase it means someone thought of you enough to invite you, but proper protocol is you're supposed to respond, I'm coming or I'm not. And 2,000 years ago, the Bible is God's love letter. You know, a lot of people think that it's hate speech, but it was the greatest story ever told. Do you know you make history when you tell his story? And you know, religion is man's vain effort to try to reach God but God left heaven to reach man. Jesus was from Beulah land, but left it to come to Bethlehem. Did you know that God was worshiped above, but he was rejected below? The Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not. And when you think of Adam and Eve and the garden, that sick, slimy serpent, the snake, Satan, came in. And this will preach, I don't know who this is for. Do you know on the back of every iPhone is the apple with the chunk in it? And the irony is some people will say, well, it's like Isaac Newton, it's of knowledge, of education. But I wanna tell you where Adam and Eve failed at one garden, the Lord said, you guys can have all of this, just don't eat from this tree, this forbidden fruit. Now, it wasn't the apple in the tree. I believe it was the pear on the ground who wrecked it for humanity because when they listened to the devil more than the divine, we've been paying for it since. And I really believe that chunk, if you will, into the apple. There's some technology that's made billions and billions of dollars with the fall of man. But where Adam and Eve fell at one garden, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ picked up the ball and won the game at another garden. He prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane, and I've been there, it's a real place, that he prayed on his knees, God, if you can allow this cup and this cross to pass from me, that'd be great. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus went to his disciples and asked them three times, can you just stay here and pray? And when God needed them the most, he counted on them the least. They were MIA, they were missing in action. They were asleep at the wheel and they weren't on post. And Jesus prayed three times that maybe the cup and the cross would pass. But God's plan was to come back and redeem us from our sin. We were born into sin. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Muhammad didn't die for you. Confucius didn't die for you. Buddha didn't die for you. The Catholic Church, the Vatican or the Pope didn't die for you. Religion didn't die for you. Your favorite Hollywood star or your favorite professional athlete didn't die for you. But my friends, it wasn't Messi, it was the Messiah. It wasn't Ronaldo, it was the Redeemer. It wasn't Jordan, it was Jesus. It wasn't LeBron, it was the Lord, and it wasn't Kobe, it was the King of Kings. I love Denzel, but it was deity who died for you. And the irony is Jesus just didn't die for you. He died as you, he died in our place. He was suspended between heaven and earth with a thief on his right and a thief on his left. One of them was mocking him and said, if you're really the Christ, see they were doubting the divine. If you're really the Christ, why don't you jump down and save yourself and then save us? The irony is if Christ would have got off on the cross, 
we would all be in hell today. But Jesus stuck on the cross, and that's why I'm encouraging you to stay with the one who died for you. The other one said to the thief, and they're having a conversation at the foot of the cross, suspended between heaven and earth. And the one thief said to the other, we deserve this, this innocent man doesn't. And he looked at Jesus and he said, would you remember me today when you come into your paradise? And without missing a beat, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, today you'll be with me in paradise. My friends, he didn't have time to turn over a new leaf. He didn't have time to join the local church. He didn't have time to get baptized, but he confessed his sin and Christ saved his soul. One doubted, the other believed. One went straight to hell, the other by God's grace went straight to heaven. And today you have two options. You can go to heaven or hell, but not both. And you say, Frank, well, I don't believe in God. My friends, I got good news. God believes in you. When no one else did, Jesus did. When your friends walked out, God's walking up. And he's saying, I not only want to die for you, I'm dying to do life with you. I'm dying to use you. Have you ever had someone use you and you feel like trash? But when God uses you, it's a treasure. You know, the most greatest high in life is being used by the most high. See, Crack has nothing on Christ. Marijuana has nothing on the master. And you don't need PCP when you know the Prince of Peace. I'm gonna ask you today to comment if you know the Lord, say amen. I wanna leave you with this and then I'm gonna leave you with an invite, how you can know for sure that your sins are forgiven and that you're going to heaven when you die. Repeat a prayer just like this. Before I lead you in the prayer, the American dream is going from rags to riches. Jesus went from riches to rags. He went from a mansion to a manger. He went from the throne to thorns. He went from the crib to the cross. And my friends, it was because of his temporal death you could have eternal life. People asked for years, was Jesus a man or was he God? He was both. If he wasn't a man, who was that babe born in Bethlehem's barn? But if he wasn't God, why did 10,000 angels sing at that baby's birth? There's something about that name. Have you ever noticed if you wake up at 2 a.m. and stub your toe on the edge of the bed, the first words out of your mouth is not Buddha, it's not Muhammad, it's not Confucius. It may be a curse word, but often we say Jesus. Now, some of the folks at the beginning of the video said, Frank, I don't believe in God. The irony is there's power in his name, but I wanna encourage you to stop using Jesus' name as a curse word. He's not a curse. He's Christ, and he's not a burden, he's a blessing. If he wasn't a man, who was that had hungered in the wilderness? But if he wasn't God, who fed 5,000 with a little last lunch? If he wasn't a man, who was that on the cross that cried, I thirst? But my friends, if he wasn't God, who told the woman at the well, drink from me and you'll never thirst again. If he wasn't a man, who was that dead for three days in Joseph Arimathea's tomb? But if it wasn't God, explain to me why that tomb in Jerusalem is empty. It's the only tourist attraction in the whole wide world where folks come from miles around to stand in line to look at absolutely nothing. Because we don't serve a dead God, we serve the living Lord. And this is what separates Christianity from every other religion. Number one, Christianity is a relationship, not a religion. Number two, the rest are died, dormant, dusty, and damned. Muhammad is dead, Confucius is dead, Buddha is dead, religion is dead. But on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. And see, had he just died and stayed dead, that makes him a martyr who was murdered. But because he rose on the third day, that means he's not a martyr, he's Messiah. And Schwarzenegger wasn't the first to say, I'll be back. It was Jesus. Hey, I wanna lead you to Christ today. Pray a prayer like this. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. You're the Savior. I heard that you died for the whole wide world. I realize right now, if it was just me, Christ would have died for me. His red blood cleanses my dark, dirty sins, and he pardons me like new fallen snow. They put you in the tomb, but on the third day you rose again. And now you're seated high on the throne in heaven at the right hand of the Father. 
There's only one way to heaven, and it's through Jesus Christ and his blood and grace. I'm repenting from my sin. Take me to heaven when I die, and I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord. Save my soul. Be my best friend. You died for me. I want to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask you right now in the comments, write, I prayed the prayer, or write, Jesus. And guys, I want to encourage you also to subscribe to our channel, download. I want to give you a gift, my free Frank Shelton Global app. Got some amazing content. But the word of the day is, why live in fear when you can live by faith? Fear is false evidence appearing real. And I believe fear honors the devil, but faith honors God. Did you know the words fear not is mentioned 365 times in the Bible? That is a verse for every day of the calendar year to remind you to live by faith and not fear. And guys, I'm telling you, Satan is a liar and he's a loser, but Jesus is the Lord. God bless you and go with God.